from learntoplaymusic.com and welcome to the music space. This is our second episode. Um, we're here today to inspire, to interact, ask some questions. So don't forget to whack on your headphones and turn on your Q&A app. All right. Today's guest is Peter Gelling. Hi, Hi Gary. How are you doing? Yeah, good. Good. Peter is a composer, a producer, plays thousands of instruments. Um, and even wrote some learn to play music books. Yes. And today you've brought in a harmonica. There we go. There it is. Great little instrument. It is. Yeah. Pretty easy to carry around. That's it. <laughs> only, only instrument you can keep in your pocket, I think. Could be, yeah. And uh, I used to uh, live uh, near a big sports oval, and at night I'd go up there and walk around, play really loud, practicing, playing, having fun. No one can see you. Make as many mistakes as I like. Yeah. It felt great. Yeah. And and other thing is, uh, when you're walking, you've got a beat to play to. Yeah. And you get your whole body into it. Right? And groove. Yeah. Yeah. All right. So I'm going to ask you some questions, Pete. About um, well, you play yep. lots of instruments. Mm -hmm. What what are some of the other ones you play? Um, well, piano and guitar are the main ones that I play each day. I'd say that probably. So the, the did two you, you started ones. on those and progressed to the uh, harmonica? Um. Uh, let me think. Yeah, yeah, sort of. We had one at home. Uh, no musicians in my family, yeah. previous generations, but my father would uh, pick up the harmonica occasionally, and okay. I sort of got it by ear, learning how to play folk songs. Um, and we would go camping, and you know, they'd have a fire at night and play a few songs and sing. Oh, great. But uh, my first real training was on the cornet, uh, cornet trumpet. Uh, and after that, the guitar, then I got fascinated with all the wind instruments and I played tenor sax for a fair while. I love that. I would still, but I have health problems which don't allow me to do that, but I can still play the harmonica. You know, and it sounds great too. It, it's uh, very vocal. Yeah. You can express it because it's like a voice and people can relate to it. And, yeah. yeah. Fantastic. Um, so pretty much... That, what what inspired you to start playing music? Was your father's was it your father's harmonica, uh, or was it something you heard or saw? Even? I, I think it was uh, I think it was just things that I heard probably on the radio. Uh, Any bands? One in time we were I was uh, you know with my parents on a drive visiting family out in the country somewhere, and this music came on the radio, which sounded fantastic to me, and. Uh, listening to it and trying to find out who it was and then I can't remember who it was but they said it was blues and okay. the word stuck in my head and so I started trying to find you know what's blues where you didn't really hear much about because it, it was LPs in yeah. those days and like you, you go into a record shop you wouldn't find any blues in there but uh, gradually uh, there became a bit of an alternative uh, second hand shop type market and uh, you could go to these shops and find all these amazing albums by people that I, I love. Like once I started to get to know the names of the people like B.B. King, and, um, you know, Otis Rush, Otis Spann, Muddy Waters, our hum harmonic player Sonny Boy Williamson, James Cotton, uh, Junior Wells, these sort of people. Um, and it was the expressiveness of the music, yeah. I think. It was now I, you know, I, mean, I, I write all sorts of music and you some people study it from an academic point of view or whatever, um, but I think it's the uh, communication with the feeling 
that gets people. Yeah. So to yeah. me, the blues is the cry of humanity. Yeah, it's, it is a feeling. That's, yeah. that's how most people um, describe the blues. Yeah. And I would agree. It's a, a communication. But so many... I think you need to have lived some life to speak the blues, mm -hmm. perhaps. Yep. And every every music tradition has its own way of uh, expressing everything in life yeah. that people can relate to. And often they may have a specific name for the style which relates to their culture, but it's expressing similar things to someone in another culture with another, another name. Yeah. You can feel all of them without language. Exactly. So it is, it, it is a language on its own, isn't it? Very different. That's okay. Water. So what, um, obviously you like lots of different styles of music. What mm. do you like most about music in general? What, why, mm. why do you do it? Never get sick of it. I, I like uh, so many different styles of music, so uh, I tend to get fascinated with one thing and uh, follow it for quite a while, learn more about it, play it. Uh, sometimes I realise that I need to learn things before I'm competent to do that in a particular style, so there's a bit of study involved there, but after you get past the basics and sort of nut out how it goes, it's really more a, a matter of um, playing regularly. Yeah. Rather than just practicing, like like learning the alphabet, you need to actually speak, have conversations. Right. Otherwise, it doesn't matter if you had an alphabet with you know 150 letters in it, no one understands you. But if you can talk to each other, that's right. Yeah, so, we so music's yeah, like that. We were really. saying earlier, that's right. The yeah. music is very much like speaking. The more you do it, yes, the better you get at it. And especially jamming, you just to get better at jamming, you got to jam. Mm. That's it. You can't really learn how to jam, I don't think. No, you do it. Get you it. You can learn some doing tools. It. You can learn some good tools, but jamming is the only way sure. to learn how to jam. But so, tell, but sorry, music, I, uh, you know, I, I think I'll be uh, a perpetual student of music. I yeah. think I can never imagine I'd get to the point where I know all there is to know about music. There's just so yeah, much of it. We will die learning. And uh, luckily, we've got uh, you no know, libraries. Well, I guess they're cyber libraries now. Yeah. Old digital, but uh, it used to be books, and uh, I've got like a truckload of books at home. Yeah, that, about music, all different things, and uh, you, you, there's so much to learn, That's and right. so much that feels good. You never get bored with it. Yeah. And so, speaking of, of books, Peter, um, mm. you wrote quite a few for Learn to Play Music. Tell us, yes. tell us something about that. Um. Okay. Well, I was teaching music uh, as a private teacher at home. Uh, and uh, I kept noticing that there were things that I wanted to get for the students that I couldn't find that weren't published. Yeah. And so I'd write exercises and stuff, mainly uh, talking a lot about blues, I guess, because of the harmonica, but that's where it started. So but, like, books on uh, music theory would be classical theory or jazz theory. And uh, the things like uh, you know, folk, folk music, world music, blues, these type of things, weren't really covered in those books much. Yeah. So uh, I realised one day that I had a whole collection that I used each term with students and uh, there was no book out there doing this in this particular way. So I, I decided to write one and then uh, it took me about a year to get it until I was happy with it, then send it off to oh, a few publishers and I set it to learn to play music and they accepted it. Great. And and that, that book's still available now, is it? Yes. Yeah. Yep. Yeah, so, but the first one is progressive blues lead guitar method. Okay. That was the first one. And so I, I worked out for that that I just got the most common sound used with five note scale of minor pentatonic, and finding out all the sounds you can make with that, getting used to being able to hear something and express it, what techniques you do, and then finding you got the same pattern. Sorry, the same scale in five different patterns on the neck. And then up and down the strings, and that's it. Like if you can, you can be f completely free on your instrument with this one scale, and play masses of uh, rock, blues, whatever styles of music, and then you've got something to start from. Yeah. Rather than give students major scales and lots of theory for six months and then show them that scale. Yeah. Um, and and uh, I always try in the books to get something that sounds good and isn't too hard to play fairly early. So in you the can book. start speaking straight away. Yes. Exactly. Yeah. Yep. 
So start. So speaking of starting to speak, let's play a little bit more blues. Okay, bit, sounds good. A little bit faster this time. Bit faster. <laughs> Peter's got a, a harmonica, which is a, a C harmonica, I believe. Yes, it's in C. So uh, which means I play G. Yep. We can talk about that if you like. We, we can. <laughs> yep. Okay. Cool. We'll, we'll do it afterwards. Yep. Two, three, five. <laughs> So I'm playing in G, you've got a C harmonica. What's That's the it. deal there? Okay. So a harmonica, the type I'm using, it's a 10-hole diatonic harmonica. This one made by Lee Oscar, the, uh, yeah. uh, one of the Hona make Hona. a lot of them. Yeah. Traditionally, yeah. they were the one. Um, yeah, so it's got 10 holes. There's a certain amount of notes available on it, and it's a bit like a guitar in an open tuning. Yeah. So you... you for, for, People who play guitar, you can tune your guitar to a chord, so you strum the open strings. Uh, that's what this is like. So you've got two chords. Right. And, and they relate. You've got a, what they call a tonic and a dominant. Yeah. And, uh, and through those, you can find all the notes you need to play in about four different keys. But if you want... If you go outside those keys, you'd have to play a different harmonica. You yeah. see people with a belt and they've got lots. Yeah. But um, if if you, it's called modal playing, I guess. And if you if you are starting uh, in this style, you're already tuned to hearing bends and slides and and you know, vocal type sounds. Uh, you you get them by doing what's called cross harp. Second position, so that the first position is the first hole there, and that's the key that you're written in yeah. on there, C. But if I go to the second hole and breathe in, I get G. Yeah. And the breathing in notes, the reeds in here, are easy to bend or easier than the blowing notes. So if we play in G, I can bend notes and I can find all sorts of notes that happen to fit with like a rock or blues yeah. sound. Uh, so that's why people play in those keys. So like, like a blues guitarist bending, like, bending his strings. Exactly, yeah. yes. Yeah, yeah, that's right. And and uh, so you you use them to add expression to, to what yeah. you're doing. And when you say that, you can play that in about four keys. Would that be, say, uh, G, C, D? Yep, and you've got maybe well, E. Something yep, like that. well, you've got uh, the first position is the the key it's written in, yep. so that you play, for example, a C harmonic in the key of C. Second position, the key of G, yep. and then third position is D, but it's a a minor. Yeah, it's not a strict major or minor. It's a Dorian. A Dorian, yeah. Scale. Okay. Uh, and then you get another minor, A minor, which is a relative a. minor of. Okay. Key of C, which is what's written yeah, on yeah, there. The, 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 um, the tricky thing is that you have to play certain notes and avoid certain notes yeah, too. So it, it takes a while if you're playing, say, in third position, to not get a note that clashes with the chord yeah, that's, that's right. being played by the guitar. And that just comes from practice and knowledge, knowledge of your keys and scales. I think so. Re playing, asking questions reading about what your favourite yeah. players do and then listening yeah. to them and copying them. And it comes from practice. And speaking of yep. practice, what, what sort of um, practice regime do you have? Ah, uh, well, I music is my life, I think. Not, not my whole life, but like it's my obsession and my passion. Um, so I have different ways of practising. I have sort of like a, a, a longer-term goal, and with that I have shorter goals and then I break them down into tasks uh, and I and I really uh, work out a course of study like where do I want to get to on this instrument how am I going to get there and then work out what I need to do it and then practice it and play it that's 50 percent then the other 50 percent is just shutting the thinking off completely and playing 
listening to whoever I'm playing with and going completely by sound rather than thought. Yeah. And uh, and then it feels good and you just want to keep doing it. Yeah. But unless you spend time practicing playing and expressing and communicating each day, you won't develop as a musician. You might know a whole lot of theory, but so what? Yeah, it, 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 it's like speaking, yeah. isn't it? Yes. If you don't speak much, yeah. you're not going to get better. No. So I think you to, need both. Yeah. It depends how you're aiming. I mean, a lot of people want to play music for a bit of enjoyment alongside with their main job or yeah. career or whatever. Um, and in that situation, I guess you, you just play what you need to be able to you know, do the style you like and then just learn lots of songs and just yeah. play. But if you want to get further with music, you, you do have to actually take a more studious approach to it. Of course. So, yeah. Yeah. And um, apparently you can imitate some uh, some sounds oh, yeah. mm -hmm. on the harmonica. What yeah. sort of what sort of sounds? Or bird sounds or mm -hmm. train sounds or <laughs> yes, well a train sound is a good one. You oh, get um, you can the, right. the, the, the uh, on uh, uh, ooh, I can't remember what record it was first on Muddy Waters. You know, we'd do a tr uh, song with a train rhythm. Okay. They get the brushes. Okay. Okay. So and, Yeah. I'll just keep going. Yeah. See, I'm starting to rock there. Yeah. Um, you, cool. You've got uh, you've got a beat to play to with yeah. your feet, and getting your body involved in it and Sound, feel, feeling the groove. Sounded like the intro to a Johnny Cash song or something. Like Folsom that. Prison Blues. Yeah, there you go. Yeah. The old train. Fantastic. Hear the train are coming. Yeah. 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 And if you if you you probably don't learn a lot of songs now. You probably hear a song and play it. But if you were to learn a song, mm. say perhaps for some of some beginners out there yes. on, the, on the harmonica or indeed any instrument, what would your yep. approach be? Oh, uh, find out what key it's in, if you can, and find out what techniques are involved in learning it, and then just try to hum it or sing it or some way of keeping it in your mind while you get the instrument and work out how to do it, what the finger movements are needed to get the sound in here. So singing... Uh, or even silently singing to yourself is like a memory link between listening and playing. Yeah. So really, it's like knowing the sound of it right, and then being able to do that yeah. on your instrument. I keep going like this in you know, a guitar or you know yeah. whatever you know the instrument I'm singing. Yeah, yeah, that's it. Yeah, <laughs> yes, yeah. The uh, the techniques vary from one instrument to the next, but the the oral side of it doesn't. So that's right. Yeah, that's exactly right. Yeah, um, we may have some le uh, some questions now from Ben. Uh, we just got an email question from Anne. Um, I'd love to learn harmonica. What harmonica should I buy? Uh, and should I start in a particular key? Yes. It doesn't matter what key you play in if you're just intending to play on your own. As soon as you start playing with other musicians, you need to play a harmonica which works with a key that they're comfortable playing in. So most harmonica books these days, I think, come with a recording, and usually they'll use a harmonica in the key of C to go with that book. Uh, and that's because there are no what they call accidentals, sharps, flats, any of those kind of things in the key of C. It's just... A, B, C, D, E, F, G, repeated higher and lower and figuring out how to get those notes out. Uh, so I would say probably if you're going to get a book, get one, one in the key of C and it'll have it written either on the top or on the, the front or the side. And, uh, yeah, listen and imitate, I think. That's a good way to start. Correct. Um, we've got another email from James. Uh, this one's directed at Peter. Yes. What other sounds can you make, and how do you bend or use vibrato on the harmonica? Okay. What other imitation? Oh, troop noises. Chickens. No, you can get. 
Yes, about to do that one. Um, a, ooh, let me think now. How you bend is you can bend both uh, breathing out and breathing in notes, but the inhaled notes are easier. And it's like you you actually use your tongue, but not the front of your tongue. It's the back part, and you pull it up and back in your mouth. And you, it's like you, if you say yo or yo, yo, and the the back of the tongue goes up and that that moves the the air and changes the direction and and the flow, and it lowers the pitch. Wow. Yeah. That's how you do that. Fantastic. Uh, vibrato. There's a couple of times. Wait, well. That's the most common way. So you can either do that or you can do that, which is probably more common. And it's letting the air in and then closing it off, letting it in again. That's, yeah. There we go. That's it. That's it. Okay, well thanks for watching um, the music space and I'm Gary from Learn to Play Music. Um, once again I'd just like to play, pay a quick tribute to Mike Stewart who's being remembered today. So anybody watching there who knows Mike um, once again. Um, yeah. Um, next week we're going to have Jason McNamara from Have Guitar Travelled Far. He's currently based in Japan so we're going to have him live. Same time, same place next week. Um, thanks very much again, Peter, for yeah, coming thanks, in. Gary. And, and Enjoyed help. it. Thank you very much. And we'll see you on the blog. Look forward to uh, hearing some more questions and some comments about the show. And uh, we'll see you next week. Mm -hmm.